Good morning and welcome to White Bear Unitarian Universalist Church. We are delighted to have you here, both those in this space and those attending virtually. It is good to be together, a community of youth, adults, and children, sharing the values of courage, reverence, and compassion. I'm Nicolay Lyon, she, her, and I am a member of the Board of Directors. Whoever and wherever you are, you're warmly invited to join us for our social hour at noon, either in person or on Zoom. The Zoom link will be in the chat box. For those in person, the social hour will take place in our courtyard. You'll have the option to join a group when you exit the building. Coming up this Wednesday, your pastoral care companions are hosting a workshop on coping with transition. Come share your grief, your thoughts, and your joy as we learn how different people cope with transition. Contact Reverend Sarah for more information. In addition to myself, service participants today include Reverend Jack, Reverend Roger, Reverend Sarah, Amy Peterson Derrick, with music from our interim co music directors, Olivia and Carla of the OK Factor, and the choir from the UU Community Church of Santa Monica. Welcome to our church. Together, we grow our souls and serve the world in love. Come in, come into this place which we make holy by our presence. Come in with all your vulnerabilities and strengths, fears and anxieties, loves and hopes, for here you need not hide, nor pretend, nor be anything other than who you are and who you are called to be. Come into this place where we can touch and be touched, heal and be healed, Forgive and be forgiven. Come into the, this place where the ordinary is sanctified, the human is celebrated, the compassionate is expected. Come into this place. Together, we make it a holy place and welcome. Kathy McComber will be lighting our chalice. Good morning. I'll be right back. I grabbed the wrong piece of paper. I'm back. Thanks for your patience. About a year ago, I joined a Wellspring cohort at WBUUC, doing a deep dive into each of the UU principles. We Zoomed twice a month for two hours and took turns leading the sessions. Together, we shared readings, reflections, and discussion. Many of us were not acquainted prior to the class. By the end of December, we had all become trusted companions, sharing vulnerabilities and strengths. Our first meeting of the new year landed on January 6th. That day, the world felt very unstable to me. The attack on the Capitol continued on live television with chaos and violence 
as class time neared. I felt a palpable, powerful lifting of weight as my trusted companions and I talked through our fears and vulnerabilities. Together, we left feeling stronger, lighter, and more prepared to continue. What a gift that Wellspring Learning Community was to me that day, and I treasure those relationships still. One particular verse of a favorite hymn of this congregation speaks to my experiences with the WBUC community since we joined in 2019. The sun, my sail, and moon, my rudder, as I ply the starry sea, leaning over the edge in wonder, casting questions into the deep, drifting here with my ship's companions, all we kindred pilgrim souls, making our way by the light of the heavens in our beautiful blue boat home. Today I light the chalice for all we kindred pilgrim souls. And I invite you to join together in the opening words in unison. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I understand that Come, Come, Whoever You Are is one of the favorite hymns here at White Bear UU Church, and that is true in many UU con congregations across the country. I also understand that Reverend Victoria shared with you about a line in Rumi's poem that's the basis of this hymn that's not included in the hymn, and that line is, though you've forgotten your vows a thousand times. And it's interesting in, read, in writing this down in my notes, I put, though I've forgotten my vows a thousand times, because I'm making this about me, because I do, and I bet each one of you does as well. This is an acknowledgement that we all forget our vows in less poetic words that we all mess up every now and then. So we're going to do the hymn twice through. We'll do the first the usual way without that extra line. and. Um, we'll do it kind of as a round, so you can pick whether to go in the first part or the second part. Then we'll do it the second time through, and we'll add in that line. And that line will go through, it's just a steady kind of drone bass line through the whole hymn. And so you can choose to sing the usual words, hum the usual words virtually, or do this new line, though I've forgotten my vows a thousand times. And Here's how that line sounds. Though you've forgotten your vows a thousand times. So let's rise in body or in spirit and join together in singing, humming, come, come, whoever you are.
Good morning. This morning's story is based on a true story that was shared with me many years ago by a UU minister from Michigan. It's a story about a family, a parent, and a child named Sam, and a really bad day. But this story isn't just about Sam and their mom. It's also a story about how we live our UU faith each and every day, and about how we continue to weave the story of our faith in all that we do. And here's how it goes. The day hadn't started out too badly for Sam. Sam had gotten out of bed and prepared for school just like any other day. It started with a stretch and brushing teeth and getting dressed in Sam's favorite cozy outfit. Sam packed lunch and ate breakfast and kissed their mom goodbye before heading out the door to school. But once Sam got to school, things started to go wrong. First, it was one thing, and then another, and then another, and then another, until pretty soon, Sam felt sad and angry, and as sometimes happens when you're feeling overwhelmed, Sam found that they were making choices that were not helping the day get any better at all. In fact, some of these choices got Sam into trouble. And maybe something like this has happened to you too. By the end of the day, Sam didn't feel any less sad or angry or overwhelmed, especially not when Sam's teacher handed them a note to bring home to their mom. Sam fought back tears as they took the letter and shoved it into their backpack, crumpling it up, hoping that nobody else saw what had happened. On the short walk home from school, Sam's mind started racing. What am I going to tell my mom? What is mom going to say? Is she going to be angry? Disappointed? I wish this day had never happened, thought Sam. This day felt awful. Sam arrived at the doorstep and slowly walked into the house and plopped down at the kitchen table where Sam was greeted lovingly by their mom. How was your day? Sam's mom asked brightly. Fine, said Sam softly. Just fine? Didn't anything interesting happen today? No, nothing, shouted Sam. I don't want to talk about it, okay? Well, Sam's mom put a hand on Sam's shoulder. What happened? Is everything okay? Sam didn't say a word. Sam's mom took a deep breath and asked Sam for their backpack. She reached in and she found the crumpled up letter. Sam looked down at the table, not wanting to see mom's face as she read the note. Sam felt angry. Sam felt embarrassed. Sam felt like crying. Sam, said their mom gently, I can see that you are pretty upset right now. Do you need a few minutes before we talk about this? Sam nodded. That's okay. I think I might need a few minutes too. Why don't we each take some time to relax before we chat? Let's meet back here when we're both ready to come back to the table. They both agreed that this was a good idea, so Sam took a deep breath and nodded their head. I love you, said Sam's mom. I'll be right here. As Sam walked up the stairs to their bedroom, they noticed that the pit in their stomach was already starting to go away just a bit. And after a while, Sam felt ready to talk about it. When Sam came back into the kitchen, mom was already sitting at the table and had set out two teacups. What are those for? asked Sam. Well, said Sam's mom, I find that sometimes when I have had a hard day or when I have had to learn a really hard lesson, it helps me to have a hot cup of tea. I thought you might like to try a cup of tea too. Sam nodded their head. Sam liked the idea of sharing a cup of tea with their mom. And then Sam had an idea. I'll be right back, they said. And a moment later, Sam arrived back at the table with something in their hand. What is this? 
asked Sam's mom. It's my chalice. It helps me remember to be loving and kind and to listen and learn. It reminds me to love. Mom smiled and said, that's a great idea. I think I need that reminder too. Would you like to say any special words before we light our chalice? Sam thought about it a little and then said the words that they remembered learning in church. We light this chalice to remind ourselves to be loving and kind, to listen and learn, to grow and serve. This light reminds us that together we are strong. Sam and their mom agreed that from then on, they would light a chalice and share a cup of tea anytime they needed help learning a new hard lesson or needed to have a tough conversation. And so they did. In that same spirit of bringing our best selves to the table, let's pause for a moment to be still and to be quiet, to remember the things that need remembering and to send love and care to all those who need it. In a moment, I will share with you the joys and sorrows from our prayer bowl, both the physical one here in this space and our virtual prayer bowl, which can be found in the Zoom chat box. But for now, Pay attention to the parts of your body that feel grounded or supported by a pew or a chair or the floor. Feel your rootedness in this exact space, in this exact time. Be present to this moment. With your eyes closed or open, pay attention to your surroundings. Notice the weight of the air, the little sounds that happen even during the quiet. Notice or imagine the colors and the textures. Feel the presence of the other people here with you in this moment. Know that they hold a variety of joys and sorrows, sometimes even at the same exact time. In the words of covenant that we say every week, we talk about dwelling together in peace and helping one another. This morning, we know that many people here in this community need some help and some comfort. We send light and love to all those who have been struggling with addiction and transition, with grief and loss, with confusion and heartache, sickness and depression. We lift up Melissa Stoddart and her family, grieving the loss of her niece, Courtney. We lift up Cheryl Niebuhr, who is mourning the death of her brother John this week. Love to an estranged daughter. Comforting thoughts for Mary Carlson's father living with dementia. And now into the stillness and out of it, we name out loud the names of those we're holding in tenderness and care. knowing that together we can hold all of these things. Blessed be and amen. Your financial gift to our congregation supports the programs we've come to rely on as anchors in our lives. Programs for youth and families, music, classes and small groups, justice work and public witness, pastoral care, rites of passage, and Sunday services. You can contribute to the offering today by following the easy prompt to text to give on your screen or by sending a check or dropping it in the basket outside the sanctuary doors. Thank you for your generosity 
and your faith in this life we lead together. Our reading this morning is called Choice by Lynn Unger. See where you find yourself in this today? Choice. There isn't a right answer. There just isn't. The game show where the bells ring and the points go up and the confetti falls because you got the answer is a lie. The preacher who would assure you of how to attain salvation is making it all up. The doctor who knows just how to fix what ails you will be sure of something else tomorrow. Every choice will wound someone, heal someone, build a wall and open a conversation. Things will always happen that you can't foresee, that you have to choose. It's all we have, that little rudder that we employ in the midst of all the eddies and rapids, the current that pulls us inexorably toward the sea. The fact that you are swept along by the river is no excuse. Watch where you are going. Lean in toward what you love. When in doubt, tell the truth.
I feel like a broken record, always talking to you about community and how we hold one another. But if I am a broken record, I will continue to play that same tune again and again because I utterly, truly believe that the only way to be a good human is to share our lives with other humans. It is hard work to share our lives with people. People are complex and annoying and like to do things differently than the way I like to do them. People love things that I hate and hate things that I love. People are part of a web of life and yet we forget that more than we remember. I don't know about you, but sometimes I let people down. I don't live up to my own values of how I want to be in community. Sometimes I'm not my best self, especially when I'm stressed and tired and generally overwhelmed, like Sam in our story. With the state of the world the way it is, we are doing our best to survive this global pandemic, the rise of authoritarianism, the global climate catastrophe right on our doorsteps, maybe you've noticed that you're not feeling like yourself. With so much in transition in our congregation, in the wider world, it's no wonder we feel unstable and exhausted and aren't always our best selves. I don't know, maybe you've noticed that yourself in yourself lately, or maybe you've noticed it in others lately. But I agree with Unitarian Universalist Anya Samler Michael, who writes, I put my faith in you. I put my faith in everyone who woke up this morning with the weight of loss manifesting as numbness, as anger, as fear, or an alienating, aching pain. I put my faith in you, and I pray you will put your faith in me. We need one another now. We need one another because we will not make it alone. I have been doing my best to offer grace to other people in this time. It's extra hard to live up to our best selves. We want the selves we know we want to share with the world right now. And so I've been trying extra hard to give people grace. I bet you've been trying to do that too. I certainly feel the support and care of the congregation as we've been working hard to bring you church, both virtually and in person. I thank you very much for that support, all of you, all of you. And yet there is an added aspect of being part of a community like ours, a community of Unitarian Universalists. We are not a creedal faith. We don't ask you to agree to a set of beliefs before you become part of our community, but we are a covenantal faith. Now you might wonder what that means. If you grew up with a Christian or Jewish religious history, you might think of covenant as a promise that God made with a certain section of humanity that if they act a certain way, God will act a certain way, like Kathy shared in, sorry, Katie shared in her chalice lighting. In a way, that is what we mean by covenant promises of how we will act with one another, except that instead of God, because we don't all believe in God, we make promises to each other. And the only people who can hold us to those promises are each other. So we are a faith community that agrees to be together in certain ways, to treat each other in certain ways, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, to support one another. We say those covenant words every week in worship, to live peacefully together, to lovingly seek the truth, and to support one another in these projects. Of course, it's easier said than done. We are human after all. We forget our vows a thousand times. Come yet again, come.
Sometimes I let people down, not living up to the agreements we've made to one another. Sometimes I recognize that I have not been living up to our covenant, and sometimes one of you have to remind me of what we had promised to each other. When I titled this sermon, Accountability, an Act of Love, this is what I meant. It's important that we keep our promises to each other when we can, and when we can't, we rely on others to bring us back into covenant. It's so important that social scientists are studying it. Dr. Stephen Evans and a diverse team of researchers are exploring the possibility that accountability, embracing one's own relational accountability to others, is a positive disposition or a virtue which may strongly contribute to human flourishing. I mean, for those of us who live in community, covenantal community, it's a bit like studying if water is wet. It's a bit obvious that it's a virtue to embrace our relational accountability and that it contributes to human flourishing. We are fundamentally unable to live outside of relationship to other humans. And the more that we are good to each other, the more of us survive and for longer. And in UU communities, where we're trying to walk together on the peaceable way, trying to hammer out division and hatred and all that separates us from another, as Seventh Reverend Sarah Stewart says, we try and we will fall short, but held in love, we will try again. The key is to be held accountable in love, to hold ourselves accountable in love, to hold each other accountable in love. The Pew Research Center recently did a study on the phrase cancel culture and how it's perceived and used in social media. There was an interesting divide between people who thought that cancel culture was calling people out for their bad behavior and keeping them accountable for their words and actions, and those who thought that cancel culture was a way to punish people for behaving and speaking in an unpopular way. It seems this is the crux of the issue. What is accountability and how is it different from punishment? Accountability can be calling someone in instead of calling them out. Accountability can be education. Accountability is reminding someone of who they are called to be. Accountability is holding clear and appropriate boundaries. The goal of accountability is to remain in relationship while punishment is about control. There certainly will be instances when being held accountable will feel like punishment to someone, especially when we hold strong boundaries. For example, if someone is verbally abusive to another member and we remind them that we don't speak that way to anyone in our community, that's accountability. If the person keeps up the behavior, they will be asked to stop and given boundaries on how they can relate to others, that's accountability. If the person continued the behavior, then they would be asked to commit to behaving better and perhaps doing something to grow, to learn, to prove that they understand before being allowed to participate in the community again. It might feel like punishment, especially if the person doesn't understand how their behavior is being harmful. But punishment is about control, about cause and effect. If you do the crime, you must do the time with very little gray area. It's about removing someone from relationship, not keeping them in relationship. There's very little humanity in punishment. There's very little humanity in our justice system. Accountability to me honors the inherent worth and dignity of every person involved. It says, we are all human. We all make mistakes and we are dedicated to doing better when we do make a mistake. We won't ignore when you've broken covenant, but we still believe you are worthy 
and capable of making amends when you've done harm. We love you. We have faith in you. Please come back into covenant. It's hard to come to the table when I've messed up. When shame and doubt and fear start to make me think I'm not worthy, it's harder still to hold someone I love accountable. I don't want them to feel shame or guilt or doubt. I want to instantly forgive anyone and everyone for any harm they've done to me without even bringing it to their attention. I want to ignore my own feelings and consider only theirs. But that is not living into covenant. If I want to say I love you, I want to help you be better and have you know that I've been harmed. We covenant to help one another, to help one another live into who we are called to be. I'm not saying we need to start picking at each other, naming every little grievance constantly. constantly. No, what I am saying is that when there's been a harm, when your heart is broken a little, when you can't stop thinking about the thing that someone said or did that make you cry or made you scream in secret, that is something to bring up. Chances are, if you share your concerns with compassion and love, they will want to make amends and return to covenant. In our story, when Sam brought their note home from school, they tried to not be in the process. When Sam's mom found the note, they began the process of making amends. When Sam's mom brought tea to help them both stay centered for a hard conversation, Sam's mom brought compassion to the act of holding Sam accountable for their actions. When Sam brought out their chalice to share it with their mom, Sam showed that they understand that part of being Unitarian Universalist is doing hard things sharing our feelings, and holding each other in community. Today, we've made a community altar together. Some of you brought your chalice into the sanctuary, and some of you sent photos to Aaron, which you'll see at the end of our service. Today, we've made something together with many representations and shapes and sizes of a symbol of our faith a symbol that shows the flame of our commitment is held by the bowl of community. I will close out this sermon with a rereading of Lynn Unger's poem, Choice. There isn't a right answer. There just isn't. The game show where the bells ring and the points go up and the confetti falls because you got the answer is a lie. The preacher who would assure you how to attain salvation is making it all up. The doctor who knows just how to fix what ails you will be sure of something new tomorrow. Every choice will wound someone, heal someone, build a wall and open a conversation. Things will always happen that you can't foresee, but you have to choose. It's all we have, that little rudder that we employ in the midst of all the eddies and rapids, that current that pulls us along inexorably towards the sea. The fact that you are swept along by the river is no excuse, watch where you are going. Lean in towards what you love, and when in doubt, tell the truth. And now, we're gonna share an absolutely gorgeous video for our hymn today of the congregation in Santa Monica playing, singing, We Would Be One. And if you are moved, you may sing along at home, hum along while you watch if you're in person here with us today.
As always, feel free to join us for social hour after this morning's postlude. Randomized small group assignments will be given upon arrival. Please join me in saying our closing words. May peace dwell within our hearts and understanding in our minds. May courage steal our will and love of truth forever guide us. Go in peace. What a blessing it is to be together in the many ways that we can be together. Hold in your hearts as you leave this room, those in this community, those that you hold in your hearts all the time and those you are meeting for the first time perhaps. May we go in peace. Amen.